All right, so multiplying integers. So first of all, a couple of terms to get down. Product is the answer to a multiplication problem. And then squared, and we're gonna talk about uh, if a number is squared, what that means, as well as what we have to do. So if a number is squared, the way is, let's say it's 5 squared, okay? That means we multiply that number by itself. So 5 squared, the way that they write it is like this. 5 with a 2 as an exponent, what's that called? So 5 squared. And so this would be saying we're going to do 5 times 5, which is 25. A lot of times, what do you all think is the biggest mistake? Five to the second power. What do you think people do a lot, Wanda? Yeah, a lot of times people do five times two. It's not five times two, it's five times five. So this number at the top, it means how many times are you gonna multiply five by itself? Five times five, if it's five squared. So if it was five to the third power, it'd be five times five times five. Five to the fourth power, five times five times five times five. You see how that works? Okay, so squared, five squared, or any number squared, that means we multiply that number by itself. So rules for multiplying integers. First of all, uh, you've got a little bit of space underneath this. So whenever you're done getting these down, fill in the blanks, write down this triangle. This triangle is a great tool to use. And I'll show you what to, what to do with that here in a second. But if both numbers that you're multiplying have the same sign, so if they're both positive or if they are both negative, then your answer is gonna be positive. If they have different signs, your answer is negative. So make sure that you do not confuse these rules with the adding rules that we talked about last week. They are two different sets of rules. Okay, so in, that, in the middle part of your paper, where you see that extra space, draw this triangle. And then in one corner of the triangle, put a plus sign. In the other two corners, put a minus sign. I'll show you how to use it once you get that down. So one corner, put a plus sign. The other two, put a minus sign. So the way that this works is you'll, you'll have two numbers that you're multiplying. Let's say that if they're both positive, we all know it's gonna be a positive answer, okay? But let's say that one is positive and one is negative. Your answer is going to be negative. Let's say one is negative and one is positive. Your answer is gonna be negative. If both are negative, your answer is gonna be positive. 
And so you just go around the triangle. You got a positive times a negative. Your answer is going to be that third corner. Okay, so that's how you use this triangle to see if you've got different signs or if there's two negatives. That's how you can use this to, to make sure um, you know what your answer is going to be, positive or a negative. Now, this does not work for adding or subtracting. It does not work for adding or subtracting. It only works for multiplying, and we'll see tomorrow it works for dividing as well. Okay, But that triangle, if it's easy. You can draw it on a paper, on a quiz, on a test. And you can use that to help you multiply and divide. Okay? All right, so let's look at a few examples. What I would do with multiplying and dividing is the first thing that I would do is make sure you know if it's going to be a positive or a negative answer. We have a negative times a positive. So if you look at your triangle, negative times a positive, your answer is going to be negative. Go ahead and put that negative sign right there. I can't tell you how many points students miss on assignments and quizzes and tests because they just forget a negative sign. So make sure you get that negative down first and then do 14 times 4. Okay. And it's going to get you 56. So negative 4 times 14 is going to be negative 56. Negative 56. Okay, another thing that's important to note. So if you look at the second question, do you see anything in between the two numbers? Mm -hmm. Same thing with the third question, nothing in between the two numbers. If there is nothing in between the numbers, you multiply. So this means you multiply. If you are going to add or subtract or divide, they will always have a sign, those, one of those symbols in the middle of the numbers. If there is nothing in between them, this is not negative 5 minus 3. It's negative 5 times negative 3. That's what that's saying. If you're multiplying two negatives together, you're going to get a positive answer. So you just have to do 5 times 3, and you'll get 15. Same thing with the third one. This is not 7 minus 6. It's 7 times negative 6. And remember that negative 6 is in parentheses because if it wasn't, it would look like 7 minus 6. So we put it in parentheses and kind of separate it. 7 times negative 6, positive times a negative. We know our answer is going to be negative. And then just do 7 times 6, which is 42. So negative 42. Negative 42. Okay, any questions? All right, go ahead and do these next three on your own. Next three on your own. Okay, our first one here, negative 5 squared. So remember, that's like saying negative 5. What are we multiplying together? 
negative 5 and negative 5. And negative 5, okay? So this is like saying negative 5 times negative 5. If you multiply two negatives together, your answer is going to be a positive. positive. So it's going to be positive 25. Because that negative 5 is what's being squared, you've got to do it negative 5 times itself. So negative 5 times negative 5 gets you positive 25. Okay? Negative 11 times 9, what is that going to get us? Uh, Chris? Um, negative 99. Negative 99, good. We've got a negative times a positive. So it'll be negative 99. For our last one, we've got three numbers that we're multiplying by themselves. So who multiplied negative 7 times negative 5 first? And then do that answer times 3. Okay, negative 7 times negative 5 is going to get us what? Jazz? Negative 3. No, 30. I agree with the 35 part. What's a negative times a negative? Positive 35, yes. So this would be positive 35 times 3, which would give us positive 105. So a negative times a negative gives you a positive, and then you would do positive 35 times 3, which is 105. You could have also done negative 5 times 3. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And then negative 15 times negative 7, a negative times a negative gets you positive 105. So either way you did that, you split it up, you should still get a positive number, positive 105 as your answer. Questions on those? Okay. So the next one, a submarine is diving from the surface of the water at a rate of 90 feet per minute. What is the depth of the submarine after seven minutes. This question asks for the depth, the depth, okay? Depth is the same thing as elevation. Depth is the same thing as elevation. Can elevation be negative? Okay, think back to last week. Remember when we talked about if it's below the surface of the water, like New Orleans, was that negative? So can elevation be negative? Yes, it can. What cannot be negative? What have we said this week? What has to be positive every time? Distance has to be positive. Does this ask for the distance it's traveled? No, it asks for the depth, the elevation. So we can put a negative. Submarines go which direction? Up or down? Down. down. So if it's going down, it's not just going to be 90 feet per minute. It's going to be negative 90 feet per minute. So elevation, it can be negative. So anytime it asks for the elevation, the height, or the depth, we can write a negative number. If it asks for the distance, we have to keep it positive. But net 90 feet per minute going down, we have negative 90, and then we're trying to find 7 minutes, so negative 90 times 7. Negative 90 times 7. And so after 7 minutes, what's the depth, Abdul? It's negative 630 feet. Or you could also write 630 feet below the surface. So either way you write that would be fine. You could put negative 630 or 630 below the surface. Yeah, if we say it's below the surface, we don't have to put a negative. Mm -hmm. I'll say it once again. If you say it's below the surface of the water, you can keep it as just 630. Because the below part means you know it's going to be negative. So any questions about that? So just as a recap. Could elevation or depth be negative? Can distance be negative? 
No, read the questions carefully and make sure you understand what they are asking you. All right, so you all answered this one on your own. Make sure that you do both things, write the expression and find the product. Okay, so I, I saw everybody writing the $4, right? If it's deducting $4 from the bank account, how do we need to write that for then? It's deducting, failing. It's a negative four, yes. Okay, how often does it deduct $4? How often, Vincent? Once a month. And it's asking for the total amount of money it deducts how and how long? One year. One year. How many months are in a year? 12, not 365. Thankfully, I didn't see anyone do that. I have seen in years past, negative four times 365. That'd be a lot of money. It's every month, and so we're gonna multiply negative four by 12. So that's our multiplication expression. And then the product, or the total amount of money, would be negative $48. Or you could have also said it deducts $48 a year. If you say that it deducts, that's kind of your negative part, and so you can just put 48. Negative 4 times 12, and then it deducts $48. Negative 48. All right, questions? Okay, there's one more thing I want us to do. It's not on your paper. So read this. I'll give you a couple minutes to do it. Write a multiplication expression or a multiplication problem containing three integers and your answer is negative. So write, you create the problem on your at the bottom of your paper that has three numbers that you're multiplying and you have to get a negative answer. So write it out and then see what gets you a negative answer.
Okay, somebody who got a negative answer, tell me what your three numbers were that you multiply together. Eric? Negative 2 times 3 times negative 4. All right, 2 times 3 times negative 4. So 2 times 3 would be 6, and then 6 times negative 4 would be negative 24. So that would work. Okay, somebody else. Dula, what'd you put? Negative five times six and negative three. Yeah. Times three. Okay. Negative five times six would be negative thirty. Negative thirty times negative three. It's a negative times a negative. That's a positive, right? So this would not work. What if we did this though? Negative five times negative six times negative three. Now let's see this. Negative five times negative six, what's a negative times a negative? Positive 30 times negative three. What's a positive times a negative? It's a negative 90, so would that work? Yes, so the only thing that Abdullah needs to change is make the six a negative. So look at what happens, okay? Look at this pattern. How many negative signs do you need in your problem in order to get a negative answer? How many negative signs do you need, Chris? One or three, right? One negative sign or three negative signs works. Does two negative signs work? Okay, so somewhere at the bottom of your paper, I want you to write this. It's a pattern, and it's going to help you a lot. If there is an odd number of negatives, an odd number of negative signs, then your answer is going to be negative. And then if there is an even number of negative signs, your answer will be positive. So you can always look at how many negative signs are in your problem. If there are one or three or five or seven negative signs, you know your answer is going to be a negative answer. If there's two or four or six or eight or ten negative signs, your answer is going to be a positive. So that is very important because it's going to help you probably easier um, to figure out is my answer negative or positive. To get the number, you still got to multiply. But you can just look at how many negative signs are there. Odd number of negative signs, your answer is negative. Even number of negative signs, your answer is positive. So what if you see 99 negative signs? You know your answer is going to What's 99, odd or even? So you know your answer is going to be negative. What if there's 204 negative signs? It's going to be positive. 204 is an even number. Your answer is going to be positive. Okay? So that's a kind of a shortcut way to see if your answer will be negative or positive. Any questions? All right. If not, you guys can go ahead and get started on these problems.